our next speaker is Dr. Rika uh, Santuani, MD. Uh, she's a member of the Association for Scientific Fiv uh, Eye Search, Reproductive Medicine and the Endometriosis Research Group. Dr. Gynecologist carries more than 20 years extensive experience in obstetric gynecology, infertility, a speaker in more than 1,000 webinars. She has written more than 200 articles and uh, for various health general and newspaper. Uh, she has various uh, uh, awards and recognition for her significant contribution in health and social care service. She's going to address endometrial preparation before thought embryo transfer. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, Professor Iman. And from our India, we do the greeting net namaste to everyone, or I can say salam to everyone. So now I'm starting to sharing my screen. And thank you. Uh, please make me host. I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, well, uh, our next speaker is Dr. Mohd Falah, MD, PhD. He's a member of the Association for Scientific Research for the uh, uh, Research, Reproductive Medicine and the Endometriosis Research Group. Dr. Falah, lecturer at uh, Karbala University, Iraq. She had a degree of Master of Science in Clinical Embryology and ART, PhD in Infertility and the Clinical Reproduction from High Institute of Infertility uh, Diagnosis. She has many publications in different scientific journals. She is going to address impact of serum progesterone value on embryo transfer timing and pregnancy rate. Dr. Falah. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity today to meet all the experts in infertility, reproductive medicine, and embryology. Thank you very much, Professor Iman, for this presentation. Is it okay? Yes. The presentation is okay. Just the title down, Impact of Serum Progesterone. I think you have to oh. proceed to see, be sure that the slide is okay. I will tell the impact of serum progesterone value on embryo transfer timing and the pregnancy rate. Progesterone is one of the steroid hormones which perform an essential function in many tissues other than the reproductive system. It is synthesized mainly by the ovary and to a much lesser extent by others such as adrenal glands. Both granulosa and fecal cell synthesize progesterone. Uh, I will uh, give a few notes about the progesterone synthesis and metabolism during the follicular phase in both fecal and granulosa cells. The figure at the left side show the synthesis of a progesterone during the early follicular phase. At the cells, the, uh, by the uh, effect of the C17 hydroxylase activity, which is only present uh, in the fecal cell, so the progesterone produced uh, by, the fecal, by the granulosa cells diffuse into the fecal cells to be hydroxylized. So start from the pregnenolone, by the action of the 17 hydroxylase, it converted to the 17 hydroxy progesterone. And by the effect of LH, which act on the LH receptors on the FICA cells, this uh, uh, which, uh, in, which present only on the uh, early follicular phase, it is convert the, uh, con the pregnenolone also converted to the progesterone by the effect of the 3-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Other granulosa cells during early follicular phase, only FSH receptors are present. So the pregnenolone is converted by the effect of the 3-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase into the progesterone, which in turn diffuse into the thicker cells. While the, the, the figure at the right side show the progesterone production during the late follicular phase. When the LH receptors, when the number of LH receptors uh, increase at the 
theca cells so the production of the progesterone in the theca cells also increase and the production of the progesterone at the granulosa cells increase into the three folds the excess product uh, the excess amount of the progesterone which is produced by the theca cells uh, may uh, be released into the circulation and can be detected in the serum. So it, this indicates that the progesterone is not only an intermediate product in steroid hormone biosynthesis, but it also play an important secretory role uh, as a secretory product of granulosa cells in the late follicular phase. Progesterone function. There is a physiological rule for pre-ovulatory serum progesterone increase in the natural cycle, which is to be which is to facilitate the positive feedback of estrogen during an LH surge acting at the hypothalamus pituitary level. Progesterone is an intrafollicular steroid that performs an essential role in ovulation, implantation process, pregnancy support, and maintenance. It is short acting and elevated at the uh, at uh, 18 hours following the LH surge. In addition, it's the main con it's considered as the main content of follicular fluid steroids in mammalian pre-ovulatory follicles. Progesterone was initially being considered as a contraceptive factor through reducing the LH surge and ovulation. Additionally, it can be used as a hormone replacement treatment for women with polycystic ovary syndrome for endometriosis and uh, impaired ovarian function. Progesterone is needed also for successful embryonic implantation and uh, preparation for endometrium to, be, uh, to support and uh, uh, receive the pregnancy, a natural cycle, fresh embryo transfer cycle, and frozen embryo transfer cycle. Progesterone also must be, so, so, uh, should be uh, supplemented in order to enhance embryo transfer success and pregnancy rate following uh, fresh and frozen embryo transfer cycle. Regarding the early follicular phase progesterone level, menstrual bleeding flows at the, the termination of the corvus luteum, which is the main source of the progesterone. So serum progesterone level at the early follicular phase should be less than one nanogram per mole until the start of an LH surge in the natural cycle. So any level above one nanogram per mole was uh, defined as abnormally elevated progesterone level during early follicular phase and has a drawback on uh, uh, embryo implantation and success of IVF. The previous slide showed the level of the early follicular phase of progesterone at the natural cycle. Regarding the stimulated cycle, in, uh, both IVF and XZ cycle, as we know that there is, uh, uh, we uh, use the pituitary down regulation either by GNRH agonist or antagonist. Both of them affect the level of uh, progesterone during this cycle. And, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, effect, considered by altering the release of both LH and FSH, but mainly LH from the pituitary. So during the cycle, stim uh, stimulated cycle, the type of GNRH analog employed may impact the risk of progesterone elevation. Serum progesterone on the trigger day is higher in GNRH agonist co-treated cycle compared with GNRH antagonist cycle. Regarding the cycle, which is uh, down-regulated by long GNRH agonist protocol, corpus luteum can be rescued by the initial flare effect of the GNRH agonist on LH secretion. So serum progesterone level increase as a result of increased LH level. So any level of uh, more than 1.5 to 1.9 nanogram per mole could be considered as elevated serum progesterone and can, may affect the uh, endometrium and embryo implantation. And uh, this uh, could, uh, as we said, uh, as I said that it is as a, the effect of the uh, flare up of the GNRH agonist, which lead to flare up of the LH level. Regarding the cycles, which is down regulated by GNRH antagonist. Incomplete luteolysis is the most likely reason for high progesterone level early in the cycle. 
Studies have consistently shown significantly decreased the pregnancy rate in women with elevated yearly follicular phase of progesterone level. Uh, in the cycle, which is stimulated by GnRH antagonist, the effect of elevated serum of progesterone uh, uh, is differed from the GnRH agonist stimulated cycle. The agonist is due to the flare up effect of the LH, while in the antagonist cycle, it is due to incomplete neutralizing. Elevated serum of progesterone as, uh, defined as more than one nanogram per mil at the initiation of the stimulated cycle in a spontaneous cycle following a natural UTL phase is rather infrequent event in general population. If in those patients initiation of stimulation is postponed for one or two days, progesterone level will normalize in the majority of cases uh, reached to up to 80%. However, pregnancy rate in this group are expected to be significantly lower compared with patients with normal progesterone level at the initiation of the stimulation. So we can conclude that uh, the, the high level of progesterone during the stimulated cycle adversely affects the endometrium and implantation. Uh, this effect could be uh, due to uh, asynchronized in, uh, endometrium with the, stage of the, with the stage of the developing embryo. Regarding the late follicular phase serum progesterone levels, the term premature luteinization should be avoided since serum LH are not, only, are not, uh, not uh, usually necessarily elevated in all patients with high late follicular serum progesterone level. Uh, also, uh, uh, I said that uh, the, the main effect of high uh, level of progesterone is due to high LH but it is not usually uh, elevated serum progesterone level uh, associated with elevated LH. So the term premature luteinization should be reconsidered. The risk of late follicular progesterone elevation is strongly correlated with the intensity of the ovarian stimulation, which mainly depend on the FSH dose conception, serum estradiol uh, concentration, uh, which depend on the production uh, from the growing and developing follicles and the number of the oocyte retrieved. These observations clearly indicate that it is the granulosa cell mass that dictate the premature progesterone elevation during the stimulated cycle, especially in hyperresponder patients. So when the uh, woman produces a high number of uh, uh, developing follicles, with a high uh, FSH dose conception and high level of serum uh, estrogen production from the developing follicle, those are high risk of uh, elevated serum of progesterone level during the late follicular phase. However, serum of progesterone increase can also be noted in even poor ovarian responder females who produce a, a little number of uh, uh, follicle, developing follicles and uh, low level of uh, estrogen production and which is mainly this related to the uh, uh, uncertain mechanisms. However, the excessive FSH uh, stimulation for those poor responder females uh, 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 put them at risk of a high level of serum progesterone at the late follicular phase. Progesterone supplementation route and administration timing for progesterone supplementation, there are three administration routes, either oral, vaginal, and intramuscular. And I think that Dr. Rito uh, covered this topic uh, uh, in her presentation. The oral progesterone administration provides inadequately sustained plasma progesterone concentration. This is due to the first part, hepatic metabolism, and impaired its absorption. Regarding the vaginal and intramuscular administration, it has been reported that intramuscular is more effective than vaginal supplementation. And some studies uh, uh, demonstrate that both of them have the, uh, the same effect on uh, serum progesterone level following supplementation. Several factors can change progesterone uh, uh, serum level following vaginal administration like sexual intercourse, poor patient appliance, vaginal retention, disposition, and uh, uh, metabolism variations.
Progesterone route of administration effectiveness can also depend on other factors such as the age and weight of the female. It can be supplemented uh, uh, also in, instead of uh, the pure progesterone, it can be supplemented through the gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. As we said that it has a flare up effect and it stimulate the production of both LH and FSH following the LH production, it uh, uh, stimulates pro uh, uh, progesterone production from the corpuscle luteum. Another important aspect to be considered in the progesterone administration is the timing and the duration of the administration. The timing is very important and should be uh, uh, synchronized with the implantation window. The implantation window, it is the ideal length of the progesterone supplementation and the growth of maximum endometrial receptivity, which can be determined by uh, uh, many factors, but mainly by endometrial biopsies collection and assessing the presence of penopause or other biomarkers of implantation in form of gene expression as uh, the, uh, uh, demonstrated by the ERA test. Also, it can be determined through the, uh, transferring the embryo and examine the pregnancy and implantation rate uh, as uh, uh, the exact, uh, the exact uh, uh, knowledge about the implantation window is the uh, uh, successful pregnancy and successful implantation. For most art treatment, progesterone supplement practice is started either at the evening of OS, at, at the evening of the day of oocyte retrieval or at least three days before embryo transfer. Thus, if an embryo transfer is performed on day three of development, progesterone supplementation should be performed three days before day three embryo. Regarding the blastocyst stage embryo, progesterone supplementation should be started at least four days or five days prior to embryo transfer, and the supplementation lasts either positive pregnancy test or seven weeks of gestational age. Progesterone level and embryo transfer. Progesterone serum level is vital to achieve successful implantation and the pregnancy rate on the day of embryo transfer. Uh, several studies investigate abnormal serum progesterone level, either low or elevated level, and their impact on embryo transfer, pregnancy rate, and live birth. In one study, a significant association was reported among positive pregnancies outcome, and the progesterone level at the day of HCG trigger uh, correlate very um, ha has a very correlation with the uh, uh, implantation rate and the pregnancy. So the study found that when the uh, that uh, among the positive pregnancies and the progesterone level at the day of transfer with positive pregnancy at a progesterone level below 1.5 nanogram per mole, while 9.3% of female with positive pregnancy at a progesterone level more than 2.5 nanogram per mole. So from these study, studies, uh, we can conclude that serum progesterone level at the day of HCG trigger, uh, the, uh, the cutoff value of serum progesterone level at the day of HCG trigger is 1.5 nanogram per mole. When the, uh, this cutoff value uh, when, uh, is uh, passed, a, uh, a, a more than a, 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 if the serum level more than 1.5 nanogram per mole, the pregnancy rate significantly decreased. In addition, among 1,100.7 women getting pregnant when the level of progesterone level below 1.5, and only 127 get pregnant at the level of 1 to 2 nanogram per mole. And 70 women get pregnant at the level of more than 2 to 2.5 to uh, more than 2 to 2.5 nanogram per mole. Progesterone level on the day after HCG administration. We mentioned that at the day of HCG administration, the cutoff value is 1.5 nanogram per mole. At the day following HCG administration, progesterone level of 3 nanogram per mole have been used as a marker for successful trigger when measured in the following day, which is the day of HCG. 
high progesterone level on the day after HCG administration, the level more than six to nine nanogram per mole with high progesterone level at the, uh, at the day of HCG trigger uh, con is considered due to an earlier uh, considered as earlier down regulation of a progesterone receptor expression, as well as accelerated glandular development and penopod expression, which resulting in earlier closure of the implantation window and decreased the pregnancy rate. So the level of progesterone at the day of HCG trigger, 1.5 nanogram per mole, and the level uh, of on, as on the day after HCG trigger should be more than three nanogram per mole, but not more than six nanogram per mole as uh, excessive elevation more than to nine uh, nanogram per mole lead to uh, asynchronized, uh, uh, lead to early closure of uh, implantation window and asynchronized uh, uh, in embryo, uh, endometrial development which in turn negatively affect the pregnancy rate. Progesterone also has a fundamental function in endometrial transformation before frozen embryo cycle. A study uh, by uh, uh, Kogati showed that the importance of serum level on the day prior to frozen embryo transfer in women undergoing a natural endometrial preparation cycle. The results indicate that serum progesterone on the day before embryo transfer in a natural frozen embryo transfer cycle below 10 nanogram per mole are correlated with significantly lower clinical pregnancy rate and live birth rate. Also, low serum progesterone level associated with higher miscarriage rate in this group of females. Similar results to the above studies have been reported, which shows that Patient with artificial endometrial preparation cycle using a vaginal progesterone had a significantly reduced ongoing pregnancy rate as the serum progesterone was less than 9.2 nanogram per mole on the day of embryo transfer. So the level of progesterone during frozen embryo transfer cycle, whether uh, natural uh, endometrial preparation or artificial endometrial preparation is very important in the uh, uh, and play an, a great uh, role in the uh, for uh, in the preparation of the endometrium and the establishment of pregnancy. Why optimal progesterone? Level? Low serum progesterone can be a factor of low pregnancy rate. Thus. This can be more serious with patients who already have low progesterone in their blood uh, 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 circulation. As uh, uh, this considered the women with a stimulated cycle who are down-regulated either by GnRH agonist or antagonist, but mainly GnRH agonist group. According to a study uh, which has been found that certain factors affect progesterone concentration on the day before embryo transfer which can alter the pharmacokinetics such as age, weight, and the prior history of low progesterone concentration. However, other factors such as timing of the blood sampling do may depend uh, on differences in the drug absorption. So not only the stimulation, but also other factors related to the patient itself can affect the implantation rate and the pregnancy rate uh, 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 by affecting the uh, serum progesterone level by altering either the pharmacokinetic of the progesterone or the uh, or its absorption. In addition, high progesterone level before eggs collection is linked with a noticeable endometrial receptivity decrease. The endometrium's gene expression profile at the end of follicular phase is certainly altered when the serum progesterone level above 1.5 nanogram per mole, as mentioned previously. Regarding the progesterone at the day of oocyte retrieval, pregnancy per transfer rate obtained in the average value of progesterone at the day of oocyte retrieval was when progesterone was nine, uh, uh, sorry, eight nanogram per mole. Uh, the level between 7 to 10 nanogram per mole and no pregnancy with a progesterone level uh, more than 18 nanogram per mole. 
regarding the middle UTL serum and progesterone levels, correlation between middle UTL serum and progesterone levels were evaluated on days three and seven after oocyte retrieval. Serum progesterone concentration and the pregnancy rate was observed and levels of more than 10, uh, 20 nanogram per mil may predict a successful outcome. So middle UTL progesterone level between uh, 25 to 30 nanogram per mil are required for success implantation in uh, assisted uh, reproductive technique cycle. Progesterone importance in successful pregnancy rate and implantation rate have been clearly illustrated. However, significant progesterone elevation prior to HCG injection can point to a desynchronization within the endometrium and the embryo, developing embryo through reducing the pregnancy rate. In summary, a successful implantation needs a competent blastocyst synchronized with a receptive endometrium, which is mainly coordinated by endometrium, endometrial receptivity uh, due to the effect of estrogen and progesterone. Thus, an optimal progesterone level is essential for successful implantation and the pregnancy. In conclusion, progesterone is essential for establishing and maintaining embryo implantation and the pregnancy. And also, progesterone is used for luteal phase deficiency in infertility treatment. Yet, progesterone therapy's optimal timing and close can and dose can influence the impact of implant uh, uh, endometrial development and the pregnancy. Also, low or elevated progesterone level can negatively impact embryo transfer time in pregnancy rate. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohga, for your uh, excellent and conclusive presentation.